If you just started making beats and you're finding you're making the exact same type of beat over and over again, today's video is for you. I'm gonna share four ideas or approaches that you can use when you're structuring out your beat. So you have a bunch of sounds and patterns complete in your beat. Now you get to the point where you might want to start thinking about structuring your beat out. Today I'm going to show you guys a few common approaches, some basic ways that you can tackle this problem. First, the most common approach when it comes to structuring out your beat is the ABAB structure. This is sort of a fundamental basic approach to beat making where the A section is the verse and the B section is the hook or the chorus. So starting off what I would do is make an intro for the beat. And what you do for the intro is obviously up to you, but I would say not to make it too long. A listener might get bored if you have a prolonged intro, so you might want to think about getting to the point of your beat a little bit early. A good idea would be an intro that lasts either 4 or 8 bars. So I'm just going to use this as the intro for now. I know it's a bit minimal, but this isn't a video on how to make an intro, this is about structuring. From here, you wanna take the verse section of your beat and you want this to repeat for 16 bars. So here, I'm gonna press Control and B to duplicate. One thing to note though, I am making this beat in regular time. So if you are making your beat in double time, everything that we're gonna be doing here needs to double as well. So right now, the beat's at 75 BPM. If this was double time, it'd be 150 BPM. The verse section that I'm creating right now is 16 bars, but if this was in double time, it would be 32 bars. You guys get the idea. So now that you got the A section of your beat completed, now we move on to the B section, which is the hook or the chorus. Typically, the hook or the chorus is gonna last half the length of your verse. So right now, the verse section is 16 bars. So the hook would be eight bars. And typically in the hook section, this is where you're gonna have more instruments playing. It's gonna have a bigger feel in the beat and it's just gonna have more energy overall. So again, I'm gonna duplicate the verse section out and I'm gonna add additional instruments on top. <laughs> You guys can see the hook section lasted eight bars and from here since it's an ABAB pattern this whole entire thing is going to repeat so I'll just highlight everything hit control B again and it's just going to duplicate out and it's up to you how many times you want this pattern to repeat typically it's going to be either two or three verses in the beat hip-hop songs nowadays are getting a little bit shorter so oftentimes it's only going to be two verses in the entire beat but really the choice is yours if you want two or three or even more if your beat ends up being too long or too short honestly it's not the end of the world i've never heard of an artist say i really like this beat i really want to use it but it's too long so i'm not going to bother if they want to use your beat they will reach out to you and ask for an alteration or maybe even have their engineer do it themselves honestly i wouldn't worry too much about the length of your beat and once we get to the end of our beat, we're gonna have a little outro here. Again, I'm not gonna to get too audacious. I'm just gonna take different sections from the beat here and just extend them out. To do this, by the way, hold down shift on your keyboard and just drag a pattern out to create a duplication like that. And there you go. This is the most common structure when it comes to a hip hop beat, the ABAB structure. So you guys can see the sort of energy level of this beat if I were to trace it out. It'll be at a pretty standard level during the verse and then it goes up during the hook and then back down during the verse and then up again during the hook. I should point out though a very common variation to this structure is instead of starting with the A section which is the verse section, what you can do is start off with the hook section instead. So if I just bring this over here by again holding down shift. This is a very common structure where we start off very high energy in the beat using the hook and then we go into the verse and then the hook, verse, hook. So this would be a B, A, B, A, B type of structure. Now, if you wanna be a little bit more audacious, you can use an A, B, A, C, B structure, where the C section is a bridge, which is typically a section in your beat where anticipation is built. We can do this in a number of ways. For example, we can make the beat a little bit more minimal during the bridge, or we can change the key of our arrangement during this section as well. And typically a bridge will only last four to eight bars. By no means is it a prolonged section in your beat. It's sort of just a short interval in the beat where the listener's attention is caught and anticipation is built up just due to the irregularity of this section. So like the pattern says, the A, B, A, C, B structure would be very similar to our original one that we have built here. The only difference being right before this last B section, the last hook here, we're gonna build a bridge right here. And if coming up with different arrangements for your different sections in your beat is something that you struggle with, I'd really recommend watching this video that I linked right above my head here. It'll show you the basic approaches that you can take if you're coming up with different arrangements for your beats. All right, so you guys can hear what I came up with. I 
have a bridge here that lasted eight bars right after the second verse section and right before the second hook section. What I chose to do here was bring down the energy level by having a little bit more of a minimal arrangement here, which is a very common practice if you're trying to come up with a bridge. And I should say, by all means, even though I did put the bridge in this section of my overall structure, it's not like the bridge has to go here. I could move this, say, for example, after the first hook. And I can have the bridge play right before the second verse starts, for example. <laughs> You guys can hear it still makes sense and it still sounds good. I would say though most likely a bridge might sound weird if you just threw it in the middle of the verse section so that might not be something that you want to do if you're just starting out. And another thing to note my bridge is eight bars which is a bit on the longer side and so it might be a good idea to shorten up the adjacent verse section here. For example I might want to shorten up the second verse section to be only eight bars instead. The reason being is if the hook is the most enjoyable part of your beat, it's the listener's favorite section in the overall structure, the listener might get bored after not hearing it for a prolonged amount of time. And so if we have an eight bar bridge and then a 16 bar verse, that's 24 whole bars before the listener gets to listen to what's probably their favorite part of the beat. This is not a steadfast rule by any means, nor will it completely make your beat awful if you don't do this. It's just a small little thing that you might wanna keep in the back of your mind when you're structuring out your beat. Now if we were to trace out what the energy level looks like for this type of structure for our beat, it would be at a standard level during the verse and a high level during the hook, and then it would get to a really low level during the bridge and then back up during the verse section again. So what the bridge did in this example was it brought the energy level really low, and it just provided us with a means to bring the listener a more exciting listen since the beat feels like it has more ups and downs now. It created context so the other parts of the beat feel a little bit more exciting. Since this is such a low energy experience, the rest of the song will feel a little bit more high energy in comparison. But like I mentioned before, bringing the energy level down for a bridge isn't the only way you can build one. For example, I can keep the energy level during the bridge the exact same as it would be during a verse, but I can just change the key of the beat during the bridge section to create contrast that way. And that's a common way to build a bridge as well. I also want to point out that even though I did say that four to eight bars is a common length for a bridge, you can easily find songs that have a one and a half bar bridge or a three bar bridge. After all, this is music, so there are no absolute rules. I just want to show you guys some introductory approaches that you guys can use here. Next up, we're going to look at the A, A plus B, A, A plus B structure. This again is based off of our initial structure that we created, the A, B, A, B type of structure. But the difference here is that we're creating variation during the verse section instead of having it just be a very straightforward type of section for 16 bars. So one common thing that you can do for this type of arrangement is introduce one of these sounds from your hook section, eight bars early. So here we'll have eight bars of our typical verse section. And then we're gonna have another eight bars of the verse section play, but this part is gonna have an additional layer on top. So the A section lasts eight bars, the A plus section lasts eight bars, and then the hook, the B section also lasts eight bars. So here I introduced the synth from the hook section eight bars early just so it shows up during the verse section. And overall this type of structure is gonna have a little bit more of a gradual energy change. Again, if we were to trace out the overall energy level of the track, the jumps in between the sections would be a little bit less extreme since we are being a little bit more gradual with how many layers are in our beat. And this is somewhat of a simple way of achieving this type of structure. If you want to introduce a completely new texture that didn't show up anywhere else in the beat during the A plus section, that's also a great idea to create some variation. The point of this type of structure is to help your beat be a little bit more interesting than just the typical A, B, A, B type of structure. That way they don't have to listen to the exact same thing playing for a whole 16 bars. They get something new after every eight bars, which will help keep the beat a little bit more interesting overall. And obviously to make things even more engaging, we could throw a bridge in this type of structure as well. The possibilities are endless. Now the final structure that I wanna look at is a little bit different than the ones that we've already looked at. This is the A1, A2, A3, A1, A2, A3 structure. The intention of this type of structure is to make the beat a little bit more similar and consistent in terms of its energy level, but still have enough variation where the beat's interesting. So there's no hook in this type of structure. The beat is more geared towards just straight rapping as if the entire beat is one long verse. But obviously if we structured out this beat to be one one long verse, it would get very boring very quickly, which is why we create that variation, that A1, A2, A3 variation. And in this type of structure, the beat would last however long you want it, let's say three minutes, for example. So for example, after eight bars of my verse, I'm gonna make this section a little bit different. So I'm gonna get rid of the hi-hats. I'm gonna add in the guitar pattern as well as the synth. <laughs> So the reason 
reason why I got rid of those hi-hats and I introduced those new instruments in was again, I'm trying to keep the energy level very consistent. And so with that goal in mind, I'm gonna be adding layers in and then taking other layers out. And if you have trouble doing this type of thing, I did a video on subtractive arrangement, so check that out if that's something that confuses you. So as of right now, I have my A1 section done, I have my A2 section done, now let's build an A3 section right here. <laughs> So what I did for the A3 section was I actually just used that loop that I did prior in my bridge. Basically, it's just a pitch down version of my original loop. I also made the open hi-hat pattern here a little bit more elaborate, a little bit more dense. And again, the intention here is that I want a pretty consistent energy level in between each of these sections here. Typically, having each section be eight bars is a good idea because that's short enough to the point where we can create enough variation to keep the beat interesting, but long enough to the point where it's not gonna be completely jarring and distracting having a new section come in every four bars, for example. And if I were to trace out the energy level of each of these sections here, each of these sections do feel a little bit different, but compared to our other structures that we looked at, there isn't gonna be this big jump up or down. It's gonna be a lot more steady. And if you wanna do this type of structuring, obviously you don't have to be held to creating three different variations for the different sections. I've heard beats where it's just two different sections going back and forth, or you wanna get audacious and create multiple variations. That could be something that you can do. But overall, the underlying idea for this type of structuring is that we want to have a more consistent and steady level overall. Now, all of what I've just showed you guys are just introductory ways that you can think about structuring out your beat. By no means do I wanna give you guys the impression that these are the only ways that you can structure out your beat and you have to stick to each and every single one of these rules that I just showed you guys. For me, I love it when songs get structurally creative, if they have an eight bar hook and then they have a bridge and then another eight bar hook, that sounds a little bit different. Or if a beat has multiple verses that sound different from one another, that's also a cool idea that I hear once in a while. Once you understand the basic approaches to structuring out your beat, at that point, getting audacious and experimental with your structuring is always a great idea. If you guys have found this video helpful, please do like and subscribe. Let me know in the comment section below which of these structures you find you commonly reach for when you're making your beats. My free jump kit is available in the description box below. Join the Discord if you're interested in having your beats reviewed live, and I will see you guys next time.